Hi guys, welcome to my video and my YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about some exciting things like a new room and some spider fatalities, right? We're also going to talk about why it's so goddamn difficult to make a video game, okay? So sit back, grab a cup of coffee and some popcorn and let's begin. Okay, guys. Why is it so insanely difficult to make a video game? I don't understand it. It should be so much easier, but it's it's like rocket science, right? You need to be some kind of genius to make a computer game. I, I, it's, it blows my mind how difficult it is. I'm trying to do these super simple things that all video games need, and it's just a pain in the ass to do it. I have no idea what's going on here. I'm, it's like one step forward and one step back again. I'm trying to do simple things like like a, a menu that keeps tracks of how many potions I have. And when I throw a potion, it should subtract a number. And if I change to another potion, the icon in the bottom left should change to that other potion icon. I mean, it, it's the most simple thing in the world and yet I'm struggling with this like an idiot. So for example, this icon I want for my throwing potions, right? If I don't have any potions picked up, it's just a white square. I don't know where that square comes from. I didn't put it there. When I pick up a potion, it does switch to the correct icon. But as soon as I throw one, of, one potion and I still have potions left, it goes back to that white square again. It blows my mind. All games, most games, need things like a health system, a damage system, right? a, a point system, uh, something in the UI that keeps track of different things. Why do I need to create a widget from scratch, which is just completely empty, and then I need to figure out all this code myself? I mean, why, why doesn't Unreal have some kind of templates for all these different things that all games need that I can drag in and change the different settings and it should work. Why do I need to build everything from scratch every single time? I'm blown away by how difficult it is to make a game. I, I just don't understand why it should be so difficult. And this whole potion bomb system that I talked about in my in my last uh, video it, it's just becoming a big nightmare because now i'm making uh, this potion system with maps and keys and i put that into the character struct so i can save it and inside that map and key i'm also putting in a new struct with all the information about the the potion that is selected. I mean, it it it's it's becoming super messy, and and I mean, I just want to throw a goddamn potion, and I want to keep track of how many potions I have left. I mean, how hard can it be? And I'm making this super complex system with structs within a struct within a struct. It, it's getting in. It, it's like Inception, man. I, and I can't keep track of of what's going on. And I'm also watching other people's developer videos, right? And they do, it, it doesn't seem like they have all these problems. They make a, a new feature with a grappling hook and then they're swinging across uh, gaps and things like that. And maybe it didn't work the first time, but then they just changed a few things and then it worked. And then they move on to the next feature. And I'm just, what is going on here? Good luck making a grappling hook system right i mean <laughs> what and i mean guys i'm also trying to make this uh, war banner flag that just can spawn in the dungeon and and you know it's, it's just an environment prop that can hang on a wall or stand on a pole or something like that with some cloth physics on so i can have a little windy breeze in the dungeon so we get something moving in the dungeons right that would be super awesome but even that is a complete nightmare to work with. I mean, I can get some cloth working and I can get some wind working on the cloth and that is great. 
but the cloth cannot, the flag cannot collide with anything. Doesn't matter what I do, I can't get it to collide with the pole which is it is standing on. And it's just, why is this so difficult to get to work? Doesn't matter what I do. I set everything, all the collision to block everything. I can set all the collision to overlap everything on both the pole and the flag and just nothing happens. I even asked chat GBT to tell me how the fuck I should solve this problem, right? And it gave me an answer. I tried it out and it also didn't work. I mean, what, what's going on here? It's just a simple flag that needs to collide with something in the world. Why is this so difficult to do? By clicking on four or five things in Blender, I can make a cloth simulation uh, with a plane that falls down on a sphere and colliding and uh, looks awesome and all that stuff. I, I, I've spent days trying to do the same in Unreal. It makes no sense to me. But, okay, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about something that is cool and awesome. I have made finish moves on the spider enemies, like Mortal Kombat fatalities. Like, I love these. I want them for all enemies and I want more versions for the same enemies, right? So you don't see the same one every time. I think these moves are super awesome and they bring a lot of character and, and violent to the game, which is something I really want. It makes the hero look like a complete badass, right? And for some reason, it's easier for me to make a fatality system where a hero is chopping off four legs of a spider with blood spraying everywhere and, and legs are flying around and colliding with the ground than it is for me to make a simple flag that collides with a pole or a wall. <laughs> I mean, what? So it's basically if an enemy takes damage and the health will go below zero or zero, right? Then play this fatality animation and also uh, contact the player character and make him play an animation at the same time and just move the player character to the correct spot, right? and then play the animations at the same time. It's as simple as that. So on top of just playing those two animations together, I also have some code in the spider that will hide, that will remove, I don't know, I think it's called hide bones uh, on the spider. So I just select those four legs that needs to be chopped off and I hide those bones and all their children uh, at a specific time. And then at the same time, I'm spawning this physics actor, which has a spider leg in it. I have created a few of these depending on uh, what type of spider it is. It needs to lose uh, the correct leg, right? So if it's an armored spider that has armor plates on the legs, it needs to lose those legs, right? Make, makes complete sense. And at the same time, I'm also spawning some blood particle effects. And then when all these things play together, it looks super badass. <gasps> so the last thing I want to talk about is this new room I have built. It's, it's a big room with these big stained glass windows in the back that gives off some awesome lighting, right? And it just looks epic. I love it. Which means I have started going into Blender and trying to create uh, some new uh, uh, some new building blocks for the dungeon, right? I, I used to have all these cubes that I just built everything off cubes, even the walls, but I need more assets and walls and floors to build things off from, right? And I have experimented a little with the art direction. So instead of having these super clean cubes, I'm trying to create some walls with some cracked stones in them, right? And I, I think it could look cool. It could bring a little more extra detail into the levels while still trying to uh, keep this uh, cube look 
right? I, I kind of want to keep that look because I, I do like it, but I also want to uh, to up the detail a little and, and make the walls a little more varied. I also made these other smaller lamps, which are also light sources that can spawn randomly around the dungeon. Uh, so, so we have a little more variation in the lighting. I started by creating these small glowing uh, lanterns things, but they looked a little too science fiction, uh, cyberpunk like. So I changed it into some fireplaces with, with just some fire burning in these kind of lanterns. And I think it, it, it works great and it looks great until I switched to Unreal Engine 5.2. Right. I wanted to do that for some time now, so I did it, <laughs> and then <laughs> everything is just worse. So in Unreal 5.0, I didn't have any performance or lighting issues at all, even in this new big room with all these uh, stained glass lights, windows in the back, where it was running fine. The, the lighting was, was looking fine. As soon as I switched, uh, that room is just uh, eating my frame rate every time I go into to, every time I enter that room, the frame rate just drops. And on top of that, it looks even worse because now all the global illumination is just flickering like like crazy, right? And it looks horrible. And then I can you know bump up the final gather setting in the lights or in in the, in the post process and that will kind of solve the problem but then it, uh, the frame rate goes down to 10 or 15 right so that's that's also not satisfying so that, that's what i mean guys it's always one step forward and one step back again right i'm making something awesome and then it just never really works right so i'm getting super excited about something super awesome like this huge awesome room and then I'm getting smacked in the face by Unreal because I, I, can't, I can't have that now. I could have it before, but I cannot have it now. I mean, what, 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 why? So why is the new version of Unreal worse than the version before? Can, please, someone explain to me what, why, is it, why are things getting worse? It's like with movies and video games too. Things are just getting worse all the time. But uh, let's not talk about that. I also made a little cool system in my lights so that so that these new light lanterns are kind of um, getting the color from the other lights around it. So uh, so we, uh, you know I have orange and green and blue lights in this game. Uh, and sometimes when ma many lights are spawning right beside each other and they have a random color it kind of looks a little odd. So I was trying to uh, do it so when lights are close to each other, they will get the same color. And I think that's a good idea and I think it looks really cool. I except for all the light flickering all of a sudden, right? But we already talked about that. And as you can see here, I have put in a small delay. So you can see the light is spawning with a random color. And then after one second, it will change its color to uh, a to the same color as a light close to it. I also I can't figure out how to get the color from the closest light that is near it, right? I can't figure that out. So when a light spawns, it just gets the first light in the in the collision overlap box area, whatever you want to call it, and then it just takes that color. It, it, it and then that's not necessarily the closest light so it's just random if there's three lights overlapping it's just random um, which one of those three lights uh, it is getting its color from 80 90 percent of the time they're getting the correct colors so so they all match in an area and i think it's awesome all right guys that is all i have for you uh, this time and it blows my mind that it is this difficult to make a video game, right? Why is it so hard to make simple things 
in in a game engine. I it, I, I don't understand. It, it it makes absolutely no sense to me that we uh, that I'm that I'm struggling like this, and it feels like I'm the only one in the world struggling with these things. I'm watching other developers, and they're just breezing through everything. It seems like the problems they have is uh, how to get the right hook for their game. How do they make their game unique and, and special and all that stuff. It's not how they're not struggling with making a simple flag that blows in the wind. I God damn it. Anyways, guys, if you are still here watching at this point in the video, I think you're awesome. It's fantastic that some people will watch these videos, right, where there's nothing but problems in them. I started out with these videos showing off awesome features and now it's just turned into one, one big problem, right? So if you're still here, you're super awesome, man. So um, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.